Welcome back, my name is Chris, and today I wanna to talk about the Atomus Ninja V as well as microphones, extension cables, and the different types of TRS and TRRS in connection with the line input and the audio handling with the Atomus Ninja V. I have actually found a couple things out the hard way, which was not very pleasant because that meant that I had to reshoot a whole video. And so that you don't have to do that same experience, I'm gonna go over a couple things that you have to keep in mind when using the additional line input on the Atomus Ninja V with the audio settings. Now, why would you want to use the line input at all? The most obvious reason, of course, is that with this additional line input, you actually have two more channels of audio that you can record into the ProRes file, additionally to the microphone that is connected to the camera. Now, if you are also splitting those channels with specific cables, which I'm gonna talk about in a different video, then you can actually use up to four channel recording, so you can record up to four mono microphone channels with that setup. However, that comes with a couple tricky things. Now going back to the main thing that I wanna talk about today, and that has to do with these cables, the extension cord, as well as the microphones that I wanna talk about, and of course, the line input or the mic input on the Atomus. Now the issue that I got burned by is that some of those microphones and some of those cables aren't quite as compatible with the Atomus line input or mic input as I would have wished for. Now I wanna make those links clear before you run into those issues. And if you have experienced audio loss or corrupted audio because of those issues and you're now trying to figure out what is going on, I hope you can retake all of the footage that you lost. I am feeling with you. I lost about 20 or 30 minutes of recording of a full YouTube video and had to completely redo it. That was not really a nice experience, but now after a couple of hours of trying and figuring out what was actually going on, I now can really make sure that this never happens again with my setups, as long as I remember what I found out. So now let's talk about those aspects so that they never happen ever again. There are actually a couple of different things going on here. Number one is that TRRS cables and TRS cables behave differently with different microphones, and also different microphones behave differently with that mic input of the Atomus Ninja V. One of the most notable things and probably the easiest for you to figure out yourself whenever you are running into that situation is that some microphones won't work with that mic input. For example, the Rode Video Micro, which is a non-battery powered microphone, this one does not work on the Atomus Ninja V at all because it probably needs power and this mic input or line input of the Atomus does not provide any power whatsoever. So this microphone actually does not work on that port at all. So you always have to put this microphone on top of your camera or connect it to your camera with an extension cord. That way this works and it records to the Atomus, of course, like normal, because the audio signal is actually recorded by the camera and then transported over HDMI to the Atomus. So that's the first one gone. However, what about the DD VMic D3 Pro? Now this is an interesting one because usually this one has a logic to turn itself on and off based on whether or not it is being used by the camera and it has a certain standby mode. And you even have to turn it into a kind of like a waiting mode so that it actually is activated and the camera or the other device that you want to use to record this one with, that has to then kind of trigger whether or not this should turn on or the logic in here wants to figure that out. However, this microphone, the DED mic, it doesn't really matter which kind of cable you use. So for example, this here is a TRRS cable. However, I also tried this with a TRS to TRS cable, and this microphone never got connected to the Atomus for recording purposes. And since you can't really turn on this microphone completely so that it just sends the audio signal through a TRS connection, you really can't use this if you want to connect it to the Atomus Ninja V. If you connect these two together, it simply looks like this. There's a little light bulb there, which is yellow, which usually should be green if it is actively recording, and the Atomus is not receiving any signal whatsoever. And the microphone is turned on, and it still does not work. As a little side note, this implementation of a standby mode on the DED VMic D3 Pro and of a couple of other reasons is the reason why I would not recommend to buy this microphone again. I would always go for the Rode VideoMic NTG, which I'm also going to make a video specifically about in the coming weeks, because that has a much better implementation of the standby mode and also a way more powerful feature set overall. However, the DED microphones do sound great and if you can work with those hurdles and the kind of interesting implementation, then that microphone is really a good choice. 
But that's just a side note in here. But now let's talk about the interesting occurrence that happened to me. I actually connected a kind of extension cord like this. This is a TRS to TRS extension cord so that I can place the microphone further away from the camera or the Atomos. In this case, I just wanted to hook it up to the Atomos and I'm actually not really sure why, but I just wanted to try it out. And I did that and it actually showed me a signal. So I plugged in a microphone right here and the Atomos showed me the signal that I was looking for. However, I kind of already noticed that something weird was going on and it kind of reminded me of a little static. And if I would have listened to my gut feeling, I would have probably checked that. However, I was in a kind of hurry, so I just continued making the video, which I later regretted dearly. Because what actually happened was that I connected the Rode VideoMic NTG to this port right here, so that it would be recorded into the Atomos Ninja V, and that looked all nice and dandy. However, after I checked the footage on my computer, there I saw that everything, or better, I heard, everything had a static underneath it and that was basically unrecoverable and I had to redo the whole entire video. Now I want to kind of go over the aspects that I found out in further testing. Number one is that if you're using an extension cord like this, which is obviously useful, then I would always recommend to also use a TRS to TRS cable on the other end. If you try to use a TRRS connector for the connection through this extension cord, you will probably end up with a static. I mainly tested this with the VideoMic NTG and there I assume that this has to do with the standby mode, kind of checking whether or not there is actually a connection and getting confused by the mixture of this TRS and TRRS connection. Now, if you plug in the VideoMic NTG directly into this port, there's no problem whatsoever. If you plug in the VideoMic NTG into this port with a TRS or TRRS cable, it doesn't really matter. The microphone will not recognize whether or not it is plugged in, so you have to turn it on manually. However, that's one of those benefits in the implementation of this Rode VideoMic compared to the DED microphone where you can't really turn it on completely. However, the Rode VideoMic NTG actually has that function so that you can manually turn it on completely and then it is also recording to this port even through a connection like this extension cord if you are using a TRS to TRS cable. If it's a TRS to TRRS cable, you will most likely end up having static in that setup. However, please make sure to check that with your specific setup because this is something that I can't really guarantee for all kinds of different microphones. But it's better to check exactly your setup with exactly your cables with the microphones and cameras and all of those things connected. Make a couple test recordings, check your audio, see if there's static or anything like that. And even if it's tedious, and I think it's definitely because you have to record something, take out the card and then bring it over to a computer or you can hook up a headphone set here and use the playback function on the Atomos and that way check for the audio having any kind of static. I personally prefer to check it on a computer screen so that I can use also the waveform. Now let's wrap this up. What we learned here is that the Atomos Ninja V has a little bit of a tricky mic in and it's very different from usual camera mic in ports. This mic import does not really work with microphones that expect the device to bring some kind of power. The Video Micro, for example, from Rode does not work on that port at all. The DED VMic D3 Pro does not work on that port at all. And with the Rode VideoMic NTG, it's kind of problematic. You can turn it on manually and you can also connect it directly. However, if you want to use an extension cord, make sure to use a TRS cable from the microphone to the extension cord and then plug that extension cord into the Atomos Ninja V. Now, I don't think that there is necessarily anything wrong with the Atomos Ninja V. This is just how it performs. But I wanted to make this video so that you can know these things beforehand instead of making the same mistakes and errors that I had to go through and had to record an entire YouTube video again because I didn't figure this out beforehand. So again, I want to reiterate, please make sure to check your setup beforehand make a test recording and then see how it all ended up looking and of course also hear whether or not it is sounding okay. This is obviously something that you don't necessarily have to do every single time. Once you know your setup works and you don't change anything, then it should continue working just like normal. However, as soon as you start changing things up, then it becomes tricky. 
I probably for one should have just connected my extension cord to my camera as I usually would have done and then I would not have had this issue. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope that it prevented you from having this issue in the first place. And if you actually ran into this issue and that's the reason why you're watching this video to figure out what was going on, my heart's with you and I hope you can reshoot whatever you have lost by having this problem. Now, all that said, if you have more questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Like this video so that more people can find it. Send this video to people that own the Atomist Ninja V or want to buy it so that they are aware of this issue or that kind of challenge here. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this coming in the next few weeks and days. I hope you have an amazing day. Stay awesome and ciao, ciao.